You're listening to WBHM. This is broadcasting the best paranormal talk only on Paranormal Experience Radio. Broadcasting live at Birmingham, Alabama. for an adventure into the paranormal world with host Shelley Robertson and 187 PI research team. Ghost Talk is broadcasting live from Ohio's most haunted jail. Listen as they delve into the history of the old and haunted Paulding County Jail, where some of the residents still live within its walls. Learn about their ongoing research at the jail and abroad, investigation techniques, and their personal encounters. Here is your host of Ghost Talk and 187 PI founder, Shelly Robertson. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Ghost Talk Radio. We have a fantastic and interesting show planned for you tonight. As always, we are coming to you live from the haunted old Paulding County Jail in Paulding, Ohio. We invite all our listening friends to join us in our interactive chat room at wbhm-db.com. Tonight, Kristen Boyd is here with me, and we will be discussing a super interesting topic. And it's super interesting for me and Kristen as well. Yes, it is. Um, And it's haunted crime scenes. We also have photos of the locations we will be discussing tonight at our Ghost Talk Radio Facebook page. Just use the search feature at Facebook, type in Ghost Talk Radio, and we'll pop right up. Hello, Kristen, and welcome. Hey, everyone. It's great to be here. It absolutely is. And this show tonight is right at both of our alleys. We, You have a degree in forensic science. And I've got certifications, and we both just love everything on the crime side of things. That doesn't sound quite right, though, does it? Um, I do want to take a moment to let you know some of the stories in tonight's show is very graphic. All of the places are real locations, and many are still standing. So I want to advise you, please do not visit any of these places without proper permissions as trespassing is against the law, and it could get you, a, you know, arrested and also a hefty fine. So, get permission first. Yep, no need for those fines. <laughs> Which brings us to the first haunted crime scene, and this one is the murder house in Boise, Idaho. Now, if you currently or have ever lived in Boise, all you listeners out there, Chances are you've heard about the disturbing events that um, have occurred as to what is commonly referred to as the murder house. Some even refer this place to the Chop Chop House in reference to the terrible things that went down here so many years ago. The house is still standing today, and walking by it, you might not realize anything out of the ordinary, except that it is old and hasn't aged well. Now, nearly three decades ago in Boise, Idaho, on June 30th, 1987, at 805 West Linden Street, was the scene of a terrible murder. 21-year-old Preston Murr was the victim of the most infamous murders recorded. He was shot by his attackers and chopped into 13 pieces. This unfortunate event all started when an argument broke out between Murr and two other men. One of the men pulled out a gun and shot Murr in the shoulder. Wounded and bleeding, he made his way over to the neighbor's house and began pounding on the door, begging for help, all the while pleading with his attackers to let him go. Now, of course, this wasn't going to happen. The attackers were dragging him back to his home before the neighbor answered the door. Now, they did call the police and reported what they had witnessed. Unfortunately, the police didn't show up until way later, after it was too late. The next morning, the neighbor had to call the police for a second time. When the police showed up, 
they discovered trails of blood on the street and blood smeared across the neighbor's door. What a horrific sight. I can imagine. I feel terrible that they didn't answer. In time, right. yes. Now later, Murr was also shot in the back of the head and then dismembered. A week later, parts of his body began surfacing more than 100 miles away from the area within the uh, Brownlee Reservoir. Two men were accused of being a part of Murr's murder, a man named Darren Cox and another man named Daniel Rogers. They were immediately apprehended and charged with his murder. Cox was given a lesser sentence because he um, complied with the police and he gave details about the murder. Overall, this guy spent just six years in prison before being released, and I think that's horrific in it's itself. It's crazy. Um, the jury deemed Rogers guilty of first-degree murder, and he was sentenced to life behind bars. He is currently serving his life term at Idaho Correctional Center and was last denied parole back in 2005, which, yay, that's where he deserves to be. Yes, he does. <clears throat> Needless to say, the home of Preston Murr has been reported to be haunted, and honestly, how could it not be with the horrific events that unfolded and with his life being taken there and him being dismembered at such a young age? He was only 21. And while there have been no reports of any official paranormal investigations conducted, it is reported by other people. Bloodstains can still be found in the house. Rumors state that the 21-year-old soul will forever remain and haunt the home, but not just the entire home, mainly within the basement where the mishaps were reported to have taken place. Now, people have stated that the aura of the basement itself is different, and they find it unsettling and even terrifying to be down there. Others have even um, said that just walking past the home itself, they become uncomfortable and they walk faster to get past it just as soon as they can. Now, some even witness the blinds on the windows opening and closing as if someone is trying to look out or to, be friend, to prevent someone from actually looking in. You all can be the judge on that one. Well, that brings us to our next haunted crime scene, mm -hmm. which is the La Lurie Mansion in New Orleans. Now, this house has a huge story and a great deal of history, but for us here tonight, we are just going to talk about the main parts and condense it just a little bit. So, located with, within New Orleans, the La Lurie Mansion stands at 1140 Royal Street. The locals refer to this mansion as simply the haunted house. Uh -huh. Now, shows like American Horror Story have made an already infamous location that much more notorious. Oh, yes. Now, however, the majority of the filming was done at a different location, and probably for the best, honestly, as the mansion is rumored to be cursed. So not only haunted, but also cursed. Cursed. That makes it even that much worse. Yes, it does. So Madame Delphine Lalaurie, born on March 19, 1787, the owner of this mansion was known as the cruel mistress of the haunted house. As she was a member of the large, wealthy, and political powerful McCarty clan. Her family included military officers, planters, and merchants. And many of her relatives owned and managed extensive real estate and slaves. Slaves. And as her surname indicates, which was McCarty, her family originated in Ireland. Now, it was during her third and most controversial marriage that she purchased this mansion in 1831. Now, yet again, she was suffering from a failing marriage and her husband moved out. And it was said that losing her third husband reportedly drove her mad and rumors began to spread that she was being cruel and harming her slaves. And maybe it was that. After that third marriage, she just couldn't take it anymore. She's probably hard to live with. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it after three uh -huh. marriages. Well, however, it was an incident in 1833 when a young slave within the household fell to her death in the 
courtyard that all eyes finally turned to Delphine. An investigation was held by the council and it was decided that all her slaves were to be set free. Unfortunately, she actually began to purchase them all back one by one and things stayed quiet until one horrific night in 1834. Oh. So on April 10th, 1834, a fire broke out within the mansion. The fire not only destroyed part of the house, but it also brought to light the seven slaves who were starved, tortured, and chained within the upper part of the building. Now the townspeople, they were completely appalled by the sight and began gathering in front of the mansion awaiting Delphine's arrest. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, the sheriff never came. And as they continued on, the crowd slowly transformed into a mob with only one thought on their minds. Oh, I bet I know what that was. That was vengeance. Uh-huh. Well, unfortunately, Delphine was able to escape unnoticed by anyone. So to retaliate against her, the townspeople went through the mansion and destroyed everything they could get their hands on. The conditions the slaves were found are just way too gruesome to share, and it was downright horrific to say the least for these poor unfortunate victims. And it's no wonder as to why this mansion is so haunted by the unrested spirits. For almost 200 years, there have been reports of paranormal activity coming from this house. Reports of moaning coming from the room where the slaves were kept and tortured are very common. Phantom footsteps also echo through the mansion and are frequently heard as well. People that have just stood near the mansion outside, they've reported feeling as if they were taken over by negative energy. And many people claim to hear screams of agony coming from the empty house at night and saw apparitions of slaves walking about in the balconies in the yard. Oh my. Well, there's other tales of hauntings, and that includes finding body impressions on freshly made beds, appliances turning off and on on their own, sounds of laughing and cracking whips have also been reported. But one of the scariest sightings within the mansion is of a ghostly woman with her neck grotesquely bent from what appears to have been a hanging, with her eyes bulging and protruding tongue very apparent to the unfortunate onlookers who get to witness this terrifying sight. Yeah, I think that would be terrifying, and I have no doubt that that place is probably haunted beyond belief. Now, you know, we had, um, Brenda in chat who, uh, said that she lived in a, in a haunted place, and they moved out. Wow. So... <clears throat> Depending on what types of hauntings. That's yes, yes. And, and fortunately for me, I've never came across nothing evil. So that's been a plus. Yes, it is. Next, we come up to the Villisca Axe Murder House in Villisca, Iowa. Now, this one is also a huge story, and it has a ton of history. We are condensing the story for our show tonight, focusing on the key factors. And I think people's even written books. There's been tons good. of paranormal investigations there. Um, it was in June of 1912 in the small town of Villisca, Iowa. The Moore family and their two children. Actually, no, they had four children, and there was two children staying with them. It's like... Uh, um, yes. Yeah, so there were six children altogether, as I recall. They were brutally murdered in their sleep by being bludgeoned to death by an axe. In total, that's right, it was two adults and six children were killed that night. The horrific event went unnoticed until the following morning when a neighbor realized that the Moors had not yet been outside to do the daily chores, and it was unlike the family to do this. So the neighbor decided to go next door and to check on them, but after knocking on their door repeatedly and getting no response, they truly began to worry and decided they should call the brother of the family. When the brother showed up and unlocked the door to check on them, he found such a gruesome sight and asked that the neighbor immediately call the police. It is tragically unfortunate that until this day, 